Welcome to Live at Five, everybody. I'm Beth Stevens. I'm Paul Wontorek. We have a really fun guest today. Who's here, Beth? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, Paul. <laughs> Delaney Westfall is here from Kinky Boots. She can sing, you guys. She can oh, yeah? sing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Beltress. Oh, yeah. She's a Beltress. Uh, I'm sorry we're late. It's my fault. Yep. Just want to take the heat for that. Uh, for Beth, it. Beth, before we get to our fabulous, glamorous guest, who what, is there any news? Is there any exciting news nope. about one of our favorite plays, maybe? Nothing. Take it away, Beth. Okay. So you guys are all too young to know this, but <laughs> Burn This is a really good play that we were all obsessed with when we were young. And in it, there the was 80s, a, in the late 80s. And it was, when it was, you don't have to give time, time on. When it was published, it, so the original cast was John Malkovich and... Joan uh, Allen. Joan and Allen. she won a Tony for it. 1987, and um, now it's coming back with someone you can't. And John about. Malkovich had a long wig. He Remember, had he had hair. that long hair, it and that picture was on the book. That's, that's what you correct. were talking about. You Beth, this Beth is picturing the printed script, which was like I wish orange. Could hold it up for you Remember, right it was orange now. and black. It was black yeah. and white picture. I feel though. like it was in my uh, original it was like office. Everyone here. had the Fool for Love, and the Seven Plays by Sam Shepard, and everyone had burned this, and I don't know why, but let's just say it's coming back. It's coming back with Adam Driver. Awesome. Uh, who that's good who casting. It's really good casting. Yeah. Um, Michael Mayer's directing. Tony winner Michael Mayer. This is a big deal. No, it was supposed to be Jake Gyllenhaal, remember? Michael yes. Mayer was going to direct Jake Gyllenhaal, and the character's pale, who's kind of like this edgy guy. Hot. He's like a restaurant manager. It doesn't sound edgy when you say restaurant manager, but that's what he is. But he's also like, isn't he like a drug addict and stuff? You don't anyway, have to give away the plot. it's a romance. It doesn't matter. It's ultimately a romance. Yeah. It's good. So, but Adam Driver's great casting. Adam yeah. Driver, I know that you guys all know him from Star Wars and from Girls, but. He Apparently that new Star Wars movie is like the greatest actor. Star Wars movie since Empire Strikes Back. Leia Salonga just told me. Oh, you, you know heard. all the fancy people. That's what she does. Anyway, Adam Driver is an accomplished stage actor as well, and he's been on Broadway, yep. and he's been around. So that's going to be really exciting, and that's coming in 2019. And the role of so Anna. you have a lot of time to find that book and read yeah, it. Yeah, you have a year. <laughs> <laughs> and Anna is a great role. So, great I mean, role. it won so we'll Joan Allen a Tony, so that's going to be that's right. good casting. Uh, so, Beth, yesterday I saw The Greatest Showman. You see everything before everyone else. But I'm not allowed to. to discuss it because oh, well my opinions are embargoed. But I'm just going to say, go see it. Um, okay. Anyway, so they're doing Christmas Story Live this weekend on Sunday on Fox. And during that, there's going to be a live commercial, which is really kind of funny. Hugh Jackman's going to be a part Super of it. Super old school. It's going to be Zach Efron, Hugh Jackman, Zendaya, and a little lady we like named Kiala Settle, yeah. uh, who's one of the stars of the film. And she sings the Golden Globe nominated. Breakout Number, song from yeah. it. Anyway, um, there's gonna be like a, they're gonna do a live commercial. I don't really know what this means. I assume it's not gonna be on the Christmas Story set, not in the house. It's gonna. The, it's supposed to be on a like a, the next lot over. In a circus, maybe. We'll see. I don't know. Anyway, I don't that's know. gonna happen on Sunday night, and I know you're all gonna watch Christmas Story Live. So now you have another reason. We'll to see do you on that. Twitter. Um, there's some casting news. So Kings is coming to the public theater January 30th right. through March 25th. And they've got some really good cast. Okay. So first of all, let me tell you what it's about. It's Sarah Burgess is the playwright. Tommy Kale, maybe you've heard of him, is the I director. abbreviated the description, so just read it as it's written. I don't know what I'm going to read right now. <laughs> I'm just didn't. doing it live, <laughs> just like Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman. <laughs> In Kings, Kate is a whip smart, whip smart lobbyist who doesn't waste her time on anyone who can't get elected and stay elected, whatever mm -hmm. that means. Kate thinks Representative Sidney Millsap is a political neophyte whose staunch ideals are going to cost her a burgeoning political career, but she's not. And I just abbreviated. Life. The description actually went on a lot longer, mm -hmm. and I just made it. But she's not. She's she, she's not. So it's it's Issa Davis of Passing Strain. She's great. Who's always good, and Jillian Jacobs of The Little Flower of East Orange. So good casting, political drama, and a good director. Tommy Kale, no yeah, one, no Tommy one better. Kale, sorry, no it's one the public. So that was King's casting. Now we have Queens casting, You're I swear. So they both happen today. on the same day. There's a new play called Queens at Lincoln Center Theater at the Claire Tau LC3. Why have a hard time saying that? Because it's LCT3 production. Uh, this one starts in February. And this is uh, has, it's about uh, two generations of immigrant women living in a basement apartment. So that sounds like there's a lot to talk about. Uh, the ensemble cast includes Jessica Love, Nadine Malouf, Anna Reeder, uh, Andrea... Sagowski, Zuzana. Oh my God! I, I I don't know how to say Zuzana. I don't know, but name. we love her. <laughs> she, <laughs> she, always, don't you love Zuzana? AKA Andrew name. Randall's best friend. Yeah, BFF. <laughs> yeah. Zuzana Zadkowski, uh, Sarah Tolan, me, and Nicole Villa, Villamil. We need anyway, a little tutorial. On so that's gonna be good. So we have Kings and Queens off Broadway this Kings spring. Kings and Queens. Okay, so here's some exciting news. So we already knew that New Year's Eve was going to be filled with our favorite people. 
right? On TV. On, on TV. Unless and live. You, oh, yeah. Unless you got tickets to go to Lincoln Center. I don't. See, so here's who's performing, which we already knew. Annalie Ashford, Aaron Tveit. Just going to pause for a second. Aaron Tveit. Laura Osnes and Christopher Jackson. But now they've added a host or a hostess. Who is it? It's Madame Audra McDonald. Oh, Mama Broadway. Mama Broadway. So this is celebrating Leonard Bernstein on Broadway, and this will be at 9 o'clock on New Year's Eve. So tape it, stay home in your jammies, or go to Lincoln Center and get super dressed up. There's a new Hamilton tour starting on Ooh. February 6th at Seattle's Paramount Theater. Joseph Morales has been cast as Hamilton, and Nick Walker is Burr. And there's other great people we know, like Taria Campbell, Marcus Choi, uh, Elijah Malcolm, Shoba Narayan, Fergie El Philippe. I don't know Fergie, but I love the name. Uh, Kyle Scatliff, we know Kyle Scatliff, uh, Daniel Sastre, and John Patrick Walker. So anyway. So Kyle Scatliff is going to be rapping because he's playing Lafayette and Jefferson. Oh, yes. That's, that's fun. fun. That's, that's fun. good casting. Yeah. So anyway, that, that tour is going to go all over the place. and You're all going to finally get to see Hamilton. Anyone who hasn't seen it. I mean. Yeah. I mean, but, it's like everywhere But now. even if you didn't see it, you, know, you know every word, right? It says yeah. all fine. Okay, so Chrissy Metz. Uh, this is us fame. I don't watch that. But oh you my watch god, she's it. so Everybody good on it. She's it fantastic. So good. She is going to star in the Neil LeBute play Fat Pig at the Geffen Playhouse in L.A. Right, and she did a reading last she year. She did a reading last at year at MCC, I think. For, so yeah. this starts in May, May sixteenth, opens on May twenty third, ends through June twenty fourth. And Joe Bonney is directing it. Joe Bonney also directed it off Broadway. That was downtown at the Lucille Lortel Theater. Yeah, way back when, with. I'm not going to say anything else. I'm going to say nothing else. <laughs> with a great cast. With a great cast. Great cast. Yeah. Uh, also on the site, I can't remember anyone's name. Sorry, you guys. <laughs> also on the site, we have Haley Kilgore took a little break to open her show. She's back with her vlog, One Small Girl. And Sam Crane, who is about to open in Farinelli and the King, has a fresh face. Oh, yeah, Sam Crane. And we saw that play yesterday. It opens on Sunday. It opens on Sunday. And, and he Mark plays Rylance Farinelli. is in it. And he Mark play, Rylance He's is like the, the, other, the other lead in addition to... Violence. Yeah. yeah. So read about him, learn about his um, crazy childhood and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Are we, you, are, have you done all your Christmas shopping, Beth? I actually have. Because People are dying to know. What? They are? Um, I haven't started. Is it time? You've got some shopping days left. Guys, we're going to be back in a second. Can we talk about The Greatest Showman now? Ugh. I know I'm embargoed. My are opinion is embargoed. Are we going to talk about... Okay. Have you guys watched the uh, show People with uh, Philippa Sue? That's I have not had a chance have you, to. You haven't watched it yet? No, I've been busy interviewing Sam Crane. Oh, she's fantastic. <laughs> I highly recommend it. It's great. I love when you recommend your own stuff. You know, can we say cute. who we saw when we were walking to Farinelli and the King yesterday? Yes. We, who did I see taking a selfie in front of Philip Azu's headshot in front of the theater? Renee Lee Scholesbury. <laughs> <laughs> I love true. it. Hamilton it's connection. True. Anyway, that's it. We're going to we're gonna take a break now. We're we'll be back. Break. We'll be back with Delaney Westfall of Kinky Boots. We'll be right back. These artists will come together for only one thing. It's not a concert. It's not an award show. It's SpongeBob the Musical on Broadway. Go ahead, throw your rocks at me. Baking a pie is easy, if you know how. I'm still standing. If only life were as easy as pie. Waitress is a hit, raised the New York Times, with songs by Grammy-nominated artist Sarah Bareilles, an uplifting celebration of love and laughter. Love, sugar, butter, flour. Brantley of the New York Times calls the Book of Mormon the best musical of this century. This was my fourth time seeing it, and they still had me at Hello, winner of nine Tony Awards, including Best Musical. The Book of Mormon on Broadway. You got to For Carol King, finding the top of the charts was easy. Finding her own voice was beautiful. Beautiful, the Carol King musical. 
Broadway's Come From Away is a best musical winner all across North America. This stirring and inspiring musical takes you to a place you never want to leave. Celebrate the best of humankind and the best in all of us at Come From Away, the remarkable true story of the small town that welcomed the world. Welcome back to Live at Five. I'm Beth Stevens, and I'm so excited because I'm here with Delaney Westfall from Kinky Boots. I like Woo! to say it like that. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> please, please. I love saying Kinky Boots because that's how Billy Porter says. He emphasizes the boots, don't you he think? He does. He yeah. does. How's it going over there at the Al Hirschfeld? It's going so well. I'm just having a blast. I couldn't have asked for a better cast or show or crew, everything. It's just amazing. It's really unusual and kind of awesome to be a replacement in a show and get to work with the original cast members, which is what you're doing now yes. with Stark Sands, also back in the show. Mm -hmm. Tell me about working with Billy and Stark. They're amazing. I mean, to be on the same stage as Billy Porter alone is like the greatest honor. <laughs> I mean, he's incredible. And to, to watch him do the role, to be on stage with him and interacting with him in this role that he created, yeah. like from the ground up, it's just, it's amazing. And Stark is the best. He's just the it's, sweetest. It's, isn't it hard to fall for him every night? It's so hard. <laughs> no, he, it's so funny. There's been several times when I've been out signing and girls have been like, what's it like to kiss Stark Sands? I was like, that's an excellent question, ladies. Normal. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. You manage. He's, he's amazing. He's the sweetest and so talented and so easy to connect with on stage. And it's just, it's been so great. So let's talk about your background, mm -hmm. because this is the first time we've really, I know that you were in Sideshow mm -hmm. as an understudy. Yep. Did you understudy both women? I did. And Megan McGinnis did as well? Yes. Did you know which side you were going to be? I mean, that's hard. This is the Sideshow mm -hmm. revival, right? Yes. With Aaron Davies and Emily Padgett. Yes. So tell me a little bit about that. That was your first time working on Broadway. Yes. And what's even funnier is when we were doing the out of town at the Kennedy Center, I was the only swing. Oh. And so rehearsals would be very weird because we, I mean, obviously all the lines needed to be said. And so, and all the, the you know, the lines of the song. And so I literally would go back and forth. And then, <laughs> you know, it was Did wonderful. you run lines with your other self? Yes. <laughs> it was wonderful having Megan there, who is a dear friend of mine. And I'm, it, I'm so grateful that we were, like, placed together and mm -hmm. that I was able to get to know her. But, um just to have someone to work off of was amazing. And yeah, because you were doing both parts. Did you go on as in both parts um, or in any part? I went on in DC as Violet. And then in New York, I went on once, because I, I was also the swing of the other ensemble girls. Mm -hmm. And so I went on as the tattoo girl. Very <laughs> different roles. Yes. Very different <laughs> roles. So tell me, let's find out a little bit more about you. Yeah. Where'd you come from? Where are you from? I'm from Southern Utah, St. George. Um, grew up there, went to school at Brigham Young University mm -hmm. in Provo, Utah. And I've been here since January 2014, I think. Yeah. And, and then took on the role of Lauren in Kinky Boots in August, August. is that right? Yes. So when you were in Utah, when did you start performing? I mean, my mom says that I started voice lessons when I was like six. I don't know if wow, that's true. I, I feel like that's, I, I don't know, maybe she's right. She might be telling stories. Maybe. <laughs> but then I did my first show when I was eight years old. It was a community theater production of Annie. And Who were I you? Mean, I was one of the... An orphan. Orphans. <laughs> I remember, I think I had one line. I don't even remember I'm sure it was. it was amazing, that line. It was the best so good. line of the show. <laughs> um, and I like got the bug. And my mom was always so supportive. And I you know, took dance and singing and acting all growing up and she was just always driving me and never once you know doubted that I would be successful which is I think the reason I'm here today because I had such an amazing support system that's fantastic yeah I hope she's watching hi mom hi Hello. mom hey um what roles did you have growing up because I know you you studied this in school yeah um <clears throat> I my senior production at BYU was Phantom of, The Phantom of the Opera. I think we were like oh, one well, of Oh, that's an easy sing. No three, big deal. <laughs> I think we were one of three universities to first obtain the rights to the actual oh, yeah, Broadway that's a production. Deal. And I played Christine, and it was amazing. It was so fun. Um, 
I don't know. My favorite, one of my favorite roles I've ever played is Kira in Xanadu. We did a <gasps> production at this local theater. That's the Carrie Butler role, ladies yes. and gentlemen. It's just so fun. So can you roller skate? I can. Oh, wait, you were in Starlight Express. Yes. See, I did my homework. I, I had the <laughs> very minimal skills that I had acquired from Xanadu, and I raised my, you know, in the audition at Tuacon Center for the Arts, I raised my hand when they said, can you roller skate? I was like, of course I can. And then we get to rehearsals, and there are, like, bowls that you have to go up. And, like, oh my God. all these things <laughs> we have to do. And, like, we had skate school, so we all, there a lot of And these are roller happened. skates. These aren't, like, roller blades. Yes. This is old school. Some of the people had blades, but I definitely was always in skates. But That's it's fun. a fun skill to now confidently put on my resume. <laughs> Just in case any more come out. Sure. There are lots of roller skates on Broadway. Yeah. I mean, there are right now in the band's visit. And that's the only one I can think of. So Sponge, there you go. Does SpongeBob? SpongeBob has um, I skateboards. Feel like I saw some skateboards. Blades. Maybe you can, But good. if you can <clears throat> roller skate, you can skateboard. Sure. You could totally take over in SpongeBob <laughs> if you want. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's her next role. <laughs> um, so now I might be wrong, so I want you to correct me. Yes. Were you a pageant girl? I was <laughs> for I a very short time. I did. I want to hear about all of that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I did a pageant. I was Just Miss one? Iron County. Is that where St. George is? Yeah, it's, it's, I went to southern high school Utah. in Cedar City. It's a southern Utah okay. county. And, I mean, my mom was, again, she was like, you have these skills. You can Why don't roller you skate do a you pageant? <laughs> you may as well go for it. <laughs> You're very pretty. Let's do it. <laughs> so I did, and How I mean, I had you? a good time. I was 17. It was right before I left for college. And the sad end of the story is that I was... Going to school in Provo it was like four hour drive, and I would mm. make it all the time for the different events. And they take themselves so seriously, which is a wonderful thing. We love that. Mm -hmm. um, but it was getting to be too much in my first year of college, and like all of these things. And so I actually gave my crown, like I gave it to the runner up, and she <gasps> went to Miss Utah. Pageant school dropout. Yeah. <laughs> I guess Go back so. to college. Yeah. I think a lot of people do it because there's so many scholarships. Yes, and, and I and got things. that, and th that's what I wanted. and. I just, I, I went as far as I needed to go. <laughs> <laughs> but you had, you know, evening gowns and all that yes, drama. And I have the crown to show it. You have the crown. <laughs> oh, I hope you share it with the angels in kinky boots. Oh, my gosh. They, they love would it. love that. <laughs> they would love that. Oh, my gosh. All right. Well, we are going to take some questions because we have our Facebook Live people. I have questions for you. Uh, first of all, <clears throat> William wants to, you to know your secret Santa gift is coming, I swear. Thank you, William. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> uh, so another question is, if you could be in any show on Broadway right now, besides Kinky Boots, which would you choose and why? Oh, my gosh. Um, I feel like since I've been in Kinky Boots, I haven't been able to see a whole lot. So that makes it hard. Um, but there's always Phantom. There is always <laughs> Phantom. I mean, who wouldn't want to be Christine in Phantom, right? I mean, but she's also, got a fabulous wig, and that's really important. She sure important. does. <laughs> to a lot of people. I've always thought that Glinda would be fun. Um, I just want to say, by the way, if you guys have not heard um, Delaney sing, you need to check out Instagram because she sings Santa Claus is Coming to Town. <gasps> did you watch that? It's so good. We just filmed they it yesterday. It at intermission. Yes. This girl can sing. Oh, It's beautiful. You. What's your favorite Christmas carol to sing? Um, I just sang a concert and I had to do a million of them. Um, I really love Winter Wonderland. That's a fun one. Specifically the Ella Fitzgerald version. Very specific. Got to be specific about <laughs> our range. Are you guys calling it intermission Christmas or Christmas? Christmas I intermission. I don't, I don't know. know. He has a Check whole thing. Check it out. Thing. It's really good. Yeah, it's fun. So you, you just did a little rehearsal and then went for it. Yeah. I mean, the boys' parts are much harder than mine was. I don't think that's true, but I like They're doing the harmonies. That. I'm just singing. You're in just the just singing. Just singing. <clears throat> um, Karina's asking, what do you like about the character Lauren? Everything. I, it's the first time that I've been able to do a role that is like so m like me at my core. Because <laughs> all the time I'm like the ingenue or like I need to be like put together and, and just like pretty, you know. And this Sopranos. Time, Sopranos. I Soprano finally problems. get to like... <laughs> be weird and like <laughs> twerk awkwardly and I don't it's just so fun I, I love everything about her and I love 
playing her every night. So if anyone's out there and wants to write a role for you, they should definitely have twerking awkwardly Absolutely. and weirdness. Yes. That's good. <laughs> um, Jeffrey's asking, what was it like being in the Beautiful Tour? It was amazing. I did it for a year and a half. I was part of the original touring company. Um, I mean, that show is so great. And seeing the effect that it has on the audience every night, that's what kept me going, especially towards the end, the, the last few months. It was just everyone is so touched and all those people grew up with the music and it, it's just so, it's an important message. I just, I loved it. I loved the show. Mm, great music to sing. Yeah. Fun stuff, fun stuff. <clears throat> all right, you guys, we have to get going, but I'm gonna ask you one more question because you've got so many questions. <laughs> people are, oh, here, we've got two good ones. So we'll ask you two good ones. One is, what's the most vocally and emotionally demanding role you've tackled? I mean, definitely Christine. She's, she asks a lot. <laughs> she asks a lot. She of sure you. does. And Elliot's asking, what inspired your, your creativity and how do you keep from losing its spark? Wow. That's a hard one, you guys. I would definitely say my mother. She, she was a dancer all growing up, and her and my dad were professional ballroom dancers. Really? They were actually, at one point, amateur national champions. Amazing. And she always just pushed me to, to do what I dreamed and to fulfill it. And to what pushes me, honestly, especially now, like working every night in this show, it's it's the audience and knowing, especially the message of Kinky Boots is so important right now, and being able to deliver that in the best way that I know how. And to that, I say, yeah, because <laughs> everybody say yeah. You guys, go see Kinky Boots. That was really lame. Go see Kinky Boots <laughs> at the Elhurst Show Theater and see this lady and check her out on Instagram at Durani. Mm -hmm. See, and we will see you guys tomorrow. <laughs>